Hello, I'm Bill Harris, and this is Life Questions, a program that provides answers to your questions about life from a biblical perspective. Many of the questions we discuss on this program come from you, the viewers, and we have more of your questions to discuss on today's program. And by the way, for those of you who haven't yet had the opportunity to send us your questions, stay tuned, and we'll give you our contact information a bit later on in the program. Right now, I'd like to introduce you to our distinguished panel of guest ministers. And they are, to begin with, Pastor Lynn Passett, who's ordained minister of Finley Upper Sandusky area, followed by Pastor Kelly Waltz, that is, uh, Kelly Waltz of the church at Allentine, and finally, Pastor David Nicholson of First Church of Christ, Fort Recovery. We're happy to have you all with us on today's program. Thank you. Now, as, as we start, uh, one of the questions that we got in from our audience, um, I think some new believers think that they won't have troubles. People who first come to Christ think that now that they're saved, they won't have troubles or temptations or hard times anymore because they're now Christian. Uh, what, what do you say to that? Is, is, that uh, is that a false premise? Oh, is absolutely. <laughs> yeah. The, um, as long as a person is a non-Christian, Satan has no use to waste any energy or anything like that in causing or the temptations, the challenges, the changing of attitudes or behaviors or anything like that the person will normally go through as they begin to learn and grow in their Christianity and they say, well, I was doing this, or I was talking this way, or I w whatever, and I want to change, and Satan will use life, he will use others, he will use experiences, whatever, to try to bring you back down. Um, so, you know, the, the hardest um, ones, uh, the hardest times might be when a person is growing in mm -hmm. their faith. So... Growing uh, pains, in other growing words. Growing pains, and uh, that's a false assumption, the whole idea that uh, pie in the sky, by and by, uh, Christianity, that when bad things don't happen to good people, I mean, bad things happen. Life happens. Life happened to Job, didn't it? It happened to Job. It happened, uh, the Apostle Paul says, he had a thorn in the flesh, and he prayed, and the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. You know, he still had it. Mm -hmm. So... Um, uh, whatever that physical or mental, or not mental, but physical problem was he had, he had it, so. Any, yeah. any other comments? Well, I, I think most of us like to think because we believe in Christ and because we're a, a, a God follower that our life is going to be, for the most part, s uh, clear sailing, but uh, I can't say that Jesus and God put obstacles in our way, but they also at the same time are not going to come to our rescue immediately because we need to rescue ourselves sometimes and figure out how life is going to work. And um, death, people always like to say, well, why, why did God let this person die? I don't think we get that question a lot on this program. I, I don't think that thing. God is letting anyone die. We all have a predestined timer on us when we are born. Uh, God knows the number of hairs on our head. He knows the days of Some our life. Than others. Uh, yeah, no, nothing personal there, Bill. <laughs> but uh, um, so many of us just want to feel like there's always a reason for something happening. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's life. Uh, we have a predestined timer to us. And because our father or mother pass away today, they, they were already predestined for that event to happen, not to our liking, not to our wishes, not to the way that we wanted to see it happen necessarily. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there's gonna be obstacles and it's up to us to, to find our way there and find Jesus to help us get through those yeah. obstacles. Pastor Walsh, you wanna chime in? It's interesting that he mentions like the death of a parent or a mother and everything is set according to a timetable. When I became first became a Christian, I was under the assumption that I was going to have an easy life because now Jesus is in my life. Everything is going to be smooth sailing. And that wasn't the case. Where did that come from to begin with before you go further? Any idea where it came from? Just, you know, the assumption that when people are trying to bring you to know Jesus, they, you know, sometimes we play up the positive parts. 
You know, you're going to be assured of heaven. Your life is going to be better. But see, I also happen to be a control freak and like to try to keep control. Uh -huh. And how is it that I'm going to grow in my walk and become more dependent on the Lord is giving up that control and being obedient to Him. Well, oh, that's, that's quite insightful. Right? But then the most growing that I've done in my walk with the Lord happened after the loss of my mother five and a half years ago that set me on this new path into ministry that set me instead of being what I would term myself as a surface Christian mm -hmm. willing to do a little bit but still wanting to keep control not really look at the ugliness that exists in me that needed to change but out of something that happened because I feel that my mom was more of an anchor in my life than the Lord was at the time. Mm -hmm. I thought, my life is over. I'll never be happy again. What's the point? I was angry at people that were happy because I was grieving. But yet, now, five and a half years later, God has transformed me and changed me by placing people in my life at just the right time. The pastor I served with, Neil, he offered to help me, and I said, no, I'm fine. A month later, I called him. I said, I'm ready to talk. Yeah. And he helped me and other people in my life, and God used them to set me on this path to move into ministry. And if you were to ask me if I would change anything, I miss my mom, I love sure, my mom, sure. but I would not change a single thing that happened. Because I know at the time God didn't answer my prayer of healing my mom, but now I can celebrate that he did heal my mom. And she's no longer you know, suffering or anything. And the best thing that has happened in my life happened out of the most tragic thing to take place in my life. Wow. That's it's quite a testimony. I was gonna say, and most people, if they're seeking to follow God, will grow deeper in their faith through the trials or that happen or, um, or or they'll just drift away because you know why didn't God why did God allow this um, as a volunteer chaplain in hospitals why is God doing this to me well maybe God uh, allowed it to happen um, you know there's consequences um, talking with people that are in jail um, why did God allow this? Well, you did this. <laughs> you know, you did a crime. Right. A you know, a you, you made a choice or in a health uh, issue. Mm -hmm. Somebody um, who uh, my dad smoked for 72 years. He had COPD, uh, emphysema. Um, did God cause him? He smoked for 72 years um, and lung cancer and three mm -hmm. pack a day. Um, there's things that happen um, that are not um, God caused it to happen. You know, sometimes things happen. People make bad choices and there's constant, well, why didn't God protect me from that? Well, God gave you the word. Why aren't you living the word? And maybe you would not have made those bad choices. Um, you know, promiscuous sexual uh, practices and then the STDs problem, you know. So it's not, um, there's life choices, mm -hmm. and then there's just life impacted. We're impacted by other people's sin. Sure. Um, you know, the drunk driver's driving down the road and hits a car, mm -hmm. and uh, a family um, or individuals are killed or a family is killed. Mm -hmm. um, God didn't cause that person to make that come on, on the wrong ramp and come down the highway at 70 miles an hour. Uh, things, life happens. But. Yeah. Well, and I was at a point where then God was presenting me the opportunity mm -hmm. to reach out to Him in a lot of different ways. So I was at that point. I had free choice. I could sink deeper into what I was experiencing, being pulled away from, because I'd been a Christian for quite a few years before this happened, mm -hmm. but a surface Christian. So, you know, God is constantly knocking at the door, nudging us to answer and respond, to keep growing. Mm -hmm. 
And I kind of got stalled in my growth. And so hmm. this was a huge opportunity, so I had a choice to make. And you just said something too, though, because God was opening a door, mm -hmm. Satan also opened a door. Right. And so so I had a you choice. could get mad at God mm -hmm. because your mother died, or you could turn to God, and so there was a there was a fork in the road. And every every time we're faced with one of those choices, changing jobs or mm -hmm. you know what whatever it might be, and there's an opportunity. There's also you know, we, we're talking about there about choices and everything like that is Satan's opening a door over here. Mm -hmm. So and I was angry for a while. Yeah, you know, which way are we, which door are we going to walk through? Yeah, you, know? you mentioned good things happening to good, uh, bad things happening to good people, and I have a very close personal friend. She's in her mid 50s, and she was just uh, three years ago diagnosed with MS. Uh, I'm sorry, not MS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Mm. And, um, watching her deteriorate over the past three years has been horrible. Mm -hmm. Why does God do that to someone who is a steadfast Christian? And you know, I've come to the realization he's using her to show in his glory that I'm not budging. I'm staying a Christian. I'm staying devoted to Christ. I'm staying devoted to God. She is probably more of a devout Christian today than she was before and she was a very strong Christian before. So sometimes I think God uses things that happen to us just to show other people that, wow, something we, bad has happened to this person, but they're not failing. My first ministry, we had a lady with MS, and she was in a nursing home, and uh, she had lost most use of her body, one arm, and but her mind was clear and everything, and a lot of people would be bitter. And we'd go down to visit Thelma mm -hmm. to cheer her up. We never walked away without being cheered ourselves. And she had a ministry in the nursing home. She was a counselor to all those young girls as aides and nurses, and it was nothing to walk in, and one would be sitting there and she would be talking to them. Mm -hmm. And um, She's a testimony. She was a testimony of her faith, and she used her limited abilities but she still had her faith in God mm -hmm. and everything and she um, she still was ministering um, and s she was doing ministry I could not have done right. because she uh, these young women got to know her on a very personal level um, and she got to know them mm -hmm. and they confided in her um, you know, just not just because they were women and I was a man, but she was able to have a long-term protracted uh, intervention with them and encouragement. So how do we look at those experiences? And if you go through that, now you can minister, and my folks have passed, um, you know, I, I could say, uh, I'm sorry for the passing of your parents and stuff, but now I've walked in the shoes. Mm -hmm. You've walked in the shoes. Mm -hmm. You can minister at a different level right. than mm -hmm. you could before. Okay, experience will do that to you. All right, well, listen, we're going to come back in a moment, and I want us to get, engage in another uh, question here that's been asked, and that, that is the concept of the Trinity. How can one plus one plus one equal one? <laughs> <laughs> we'll deal with that and more right after this. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, we're back with more of your questions. And this latest one that came in talks about the Trinity. How can one plus one plus one equal one? You said it's the new math. Yeah, yeah, it's new math. That's, that's my final answer. <laughs> well, for those who have gone to church uh, for most of their lives, I don't think this is too complicated of a question, but for anyone who's new to the church, mm -hmm. 
it gets a little foggy because there's God and then there's God's son, Jesus. But then when Jesus was put to death and crucified, he became the Holy Spirit. And they're all coming from God. They are all one human being, one, one of the flesh. And uh, that's a little hard for people to wrap their heads around if they're not really a, a true Christian and really have uh, much of a testimony to live by. So I guess don't panic. Don't feel like you don't understand, so therefore I'm not ever going to get this because it just takes indoctrination to the doctrine to understand how this all works and maybe somebody else has got a better way of understanding it or describing it, but to me it, it's God, it's Jesus, and it's the Holy Spirit after Christ was put to death and, and they're all three in one. Now the uh, Genesis, um, when God is going to create man, he said, let us make man in our image. Mm -hmm. And so two plural pronouns are used right at the very beginning mm -hmm. of, of creation, let us in our image. And, but again, it's that um, finite ability of us understanding the spiritual aspects. It comes down to, a, okay, a lot of books have been written, a lot of arguments have been presented, a mm -hmm. lot of theologians debate the issue and they have higher degrees in understanding of the ancient languages than I do, and they still don't agree. <laughs> and, and it comes down to, um, I don't know how God takes inanimate objects, dirt, and food <laughs> is produced that we eat that provides energy. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and science knows the process, <clears throat> but even we know living and non-living but we have not really defined how life, you mm -hmm. know. So when it comes to the one plus one plus one or the uh, uh, argument that water is liquid, steam, ice, is still water, mm -hmm. still H2O, um, I, I think every kind of explanation we come up with kind of if we understand it, and if we understand God, to me, my God is too small. <laughs> so if I can totally wrap my mind around understanding when the Bible talks about some of these things, then I've created an image that isn't, because God always breaks those images mm -hmm. in another passage. Once I, man, I think I understand. No, I don't. <laughs> You know, the essentials I understand, but right. I, I just have to come down to faith, okay. And, and your, your views? Uh, we'd been talking in church recently about the Holy Spirit, and, you know, we addressed the fact, and we did go back to Genesis in the beginning where you can find scriptural uh, references referencing God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit all there together. Mm -hmm. In the idea that God is the creator, God the mm -hmm. Lord is our creator. He created everything. He created us. And God the Son, Jesus, is the redeemer. He was sent for a purpose to redeem with, you know, the result of sin coming into the world. And then Jesus is the one that told his disciples, you know, my father is going to send one because you will never yes. be alone. That's right. mm -hmm. And um, so that's our Holy Spirit. When we accept Jesus as our Savior and the Spirit comes in, takes up residence, uh -huh. he's the sustainer hey. to help us get along. And I was just thinking as you were speaking, the fact that sometimes it's hard to wrap our mind around all of this mm -hmm. and faith. We just put faith in God's promises. You know, I know that Jesus died on the cross for me. And I think about my parents when I was young and they would try to explain things that were beyond my comprehension, but because I knew they loved me and wanted what was best for me, I trust my parents mm -hmm. even if I didn't understand everything they were trying to explain to me. Mm -hmm. And so I don't understand everything because God operates up in that spiritual realm. I'm in the natural realm here where there are limits that are placed. And so I know that my father loves me. So even if I can't understand every little aspect of 
God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and while that all comes together in one, I know God loves me. And I know that the Spirit is here within me to guide me every step mm -hmm. of the way. Mm -hmm. And I know it's all for my good because my Father loves me. Yeah. And so I'm just going to trust, like I trust my parents, earthly parents, mm -hmm. that they're going to do what's best for me. Mm. Well, I, I recall too how Jesus talked about that. Uh, he said that when, when, um, when the Spirit of God comes, he said it's, he's going to be the Spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, he let us know that he had to leave us, but he was going to send uh, the Holy Spirit to be with us, to be resident mm -hmm. within us. And it's, what's nice about it, too, I think, is that unlike the Old Testament, when in those days it was uniquely kings, priests, and prophets who, were, who received the Spirit of God, and at that time the Spirit of God was, was overshadowing them. Mm -hmm. Others other than those three titles were merely like laypersons and the right. like. But now the Holy Spirit comes to dwell inside of us and to lead us and guide us all along the way. And while he's doing that, Jesus is there representing us as an advocate to the Father because if we sin, you know, we make a boo-boo, mm -hmm. you can talk to Jesus and he will, he will forgive you. Right. And, um, and we have that intercessory type thing going on in heaven. And Jesus kind of leans over to the Father and says, I want you to forgive him because of what he, I understand what they've been through. Well, and the Holy Spirit was the intercessor because when we hit those pits and mm -hmm. we're down there and Paul says, uh, you know, we don't know what to pray. You know, mm -hmm. you've probably all been in situations yes, yes. and the audience has been in situations. You don't know what to pray. Mm -hmm. You don't, I mean, you don't know left or right. You don't know up or down. You don't know to pray for healing and God's healing may be death mm -hmm. for that person because the disease may have, if they lived physically, they may live a very inadequate life, right. very painful life or whatever. But we don't know what to pray. We, we just pray and the Holy Spirit, as we're promised, makes intercession. Makes intercession. Yeah. That they know. And he and does that to Jesus who's sitting on the right hand of God, God the Father. Right. Yeah. So th there's that faith, you know, mm -hmm. that, again, we're not alone. And it's uh, the comforter. The Holy Spirit is yeah, called the comforter, yeah, the, yeah. the one that can bring peace. But can you so. imagine that the same Spirit that helped God the Father and God the Son in the creation of this universe, that's the it's same Spirit us. that's now dwelling in you and me? Mm -hmm. The same Spirit. I, and I think sometimes as Christians, we, um, we sell ourselves short for what we have going on inside of us because this is why it, God wants us to live so circumspectly because of who we have inside of us, who's dwelling inside of us. I think we and almost do two things. We underestimate ourselves, yeah. but then we underestimate God. Mm -hmm. You know, God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not <laughs> your yeah. ways. Mm -mm. And it, it's so easy for us to say, well, why didn't, didn't God do this instead? Well, that, that takes but, us back to our thoughts aren't his thoughts. That's right. And like you said, in the Old Testament, priests and kings and prophets had this unique thing. And in the New Testament, all believers are referred to by Paul as priests and kings. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we are, every believer is representing God, not just a unique class. Of, of ministers, of mm -hmm. clergy. So it's, it's a class of priests that every believer goes out and has the Holy Spirit, has been forgiven of God, mm -hmm. and is representing mm -hmm. God in the community and can make prayer, you know, pray for others. Um, and, and to, um, when they see us on the street or in the community or at the workplace or whatever, we're, we're representing God. Mm -hmm. So, um, because now the Holy Spirit is given to believers at right. large. And uh, um, the, you know, the veil was torn, a separation yes. that kept the common man and everybody but the high priest That's right. from God. There you go. Right. <laughs> you know, Isn't that and that amazing? was only once a year. And, and I forgot that, I know, I recall the measurements of it, I, I don't remember now, but the measurements of that veil 
I mean, it wasn't like some huge. little sheer thing. Oh, huge. It was yeah, huge. Uh, three huge. to four inches thick. Yeah, and it was torn, the Bible says, from top to bottom. Right. Which meant that now, now the Spirit of God or the presence of God is no longer sealed inside of a temple, but he was made accessible to everybody. And that happened the minute Christ drew his last breath on the yeah, cross. Right. And before Christ died, he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because when God looked down on that cross, it wasn't his son that he saw. It was the flesh of the whore, the flesh of the drug addict. It was the flesh of the, of the, um, of, the no, of me, no uh, uh, the, of us as all, all sinners. All of us, our flesh was sinning. And God was offended by sin. And so God the Father and God the Holy Spirit stepped back and left Jesus to die alone. Mm -hmm. He died alone. I mean, God, God abandoned his own son for us. us. I mean, who are we that God would do that? But look at the love that he had for us. And Jesus, in referring to Psalm 22, <clears throat> the second half of the 22 is the victory half. Mm -hmm. So the first half is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it goes down, and the second half of Psalm 22 comes back up, mm -hmm. and, and it's the victory. Mm -hmm. yes, so, yes. you know, the, as he cried out, you know, there's the victory at, on the third day. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and our victory, uh, that we have access to God, you know, the, and I, I think we underestimate that access. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, too many people underestimate. I mean, I can pray to God. That's <laughs> he right. hears me. That's right. yeah. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah. But that's the purpose of having the Holy Spirit, because like you had said earlier, that he will make intercession for us. Mm -hmm. And that is so important because sometimes, you, you're right, I, I don't know what to pray. You, know, you just get overwhelmed mm -hmm. with situations of life. But the Spirit of God makes the intercession for us. Mm -hmm. And so God's got this thing all thought out, you know. We, we try to figure God out, but he's, he's got it. And, and, and what's amazing is that when Adam and Eve sinned, it didn't catch God off guard mm -mm. because the Bible says that Christ was slain before the foundation of the world. I mean, it was already right. conceived in the mind of God before he created man, it was going to fall. Yeah. <laughs> and he made those provisions for us. He could, have created, he could have created us like the monarch butterfly. Yeah. That goes back to a certain <laughs> place. I mean, the geese go south and, you know, animals do things. They don't think about it. And he could have created, but he gave us that, uh, his ability to choose mm -hmm. good or what, you know, he gave us that free will. He gave us that ability to think. Mm -hmm. So. Well, thank you. You, you. We run out of time and that's a good note to end on. Hmm. And we just thank God for being God and for uh -huh. letting us have this program. And here we live in a great country, the greatest country the world has ever known that we even, even talk about the things of the Lord. Uh, this day and time we're grateful for that we don't take it for granted lord but we thank you for being with us and want you to join right. us again next week and every week at the same time for life questions and in the meantime between now and the next program send us your questions mm -hmm. so that we can ask them uh, with a panel of experts like these men and, 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 and lady here that are with us today i'm bill harris and we'll see you again next week at the same time bye-bye You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>